it's a time-honored tradition passed down from generations. And even though we don't know what tomorrow holds, we can do our part today to ensure the future of elk, other wildlife, their habitat, and our hunting heritage. Join today and help us ensure the future. Well, welcome back to another episode of According to Flint, uh, episode number 24, I'm being told that I was wrong on the last couple. Happy to welcome the, I'm going to go through some credentials here, the 1992 college national champion bull rider, the 1995 BRCA world champion, one of the PBR founders, but most importantly, this is, this is the one I like the best. The 1991 Reserve National High School All-Around Cowboy. <laughs> How's that digging for statistics? Oh, the one and it. only Jerome Davis. Hey, Jerome, 1991. One day I'm on Facebook <laughs> and somebody posts a, a page from like the, whatever the high school newspaper is. <laughs> what you were a bull rider and what a bronc rider? Bronc rider, yeah. And if I wouldn't took the re ride, I'd been the all round champ. <laughs> yeah. So when when did you get a re ride? What what round? Tell me the story. Second round, the second round. Uh, my bronc, I rode him, and I and I won fourth in the in the first round in the bronc riding. So I made the short round, but no, you know it wasn't the cowboy thing to do. You got to take the re ride, and freaking bronc throw me off. I didn't make the short round. <laughs> Okay, here's here, here's the quiz. Who was the all around cowboy Whoa. that that beat you? <laughs> Golly, that's a. I want to say it was a kid out of Utah, but I don't know. We'll go with Wyoming. Lynn, was it really? Lynn Sheehan, Sheehan, Lynn Sheehan from Wyoming. That's who beat me. Yeah. Well, see, and I knew I had a lead going into it. Yeah, uh, I what I'd done, I messed around when we was out there at the high school finals, and I'd pulled my growing off the first bull I had. I won the round, and my dang growing swole up. Well, I'd entered some RA rodeos during the week, and I was in oh, so night. wait, okay, hold on. So you're at the high school finals, and you go to other rodeos during? Oh the week. yeah, we we yeah, was in <laughs> Oklahoma, and I knew there was some IPRA rodeos, so we entered the bronc riding, and the bull riding at another one, and went. We took off and went to there, and dang it, I my grown, I should have never got on. But that yeah. wasn't the cowboy thing to do back then, you know. You That's got right. So I got on my bronc there. Well, then time I made the short round in the bull riding, my old grown was so tore up. I couldn't get my bull twisted. If I could have yeah. got him rode, I would have. But yeah. I pretty rough shape. So, hey, uh, okay, so it, here's what I thought was interesting. So I looked – so I zoomed in a little closer <laughs> on this picture. Here's uh, – for one – in the in the bronc riding, Sean Stroh from Montana won the short round that night. Oh, there, you there you go. I know Sean. But here's you were second in the all around. Here's third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, I liked this. Third in the all around, right behind you was Rondo O'Connor. Yeah, yeah. Rondo, he'd have been from California, right? Was it Rondo yeah. from California? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fourth was Chad Klein. Oh yeah. And fifth was Lonnie Steverson. What Long, Lonnie tall doing? Lonnie Stevenson. How about that? Oh, man. Yeah. I can tell you some stories about Lonnie. Well, you know, we had Lonnie rodeo together, so it was. Yeah, yeah. But that's a lot. That's good rough stock, guys. Now it's all timed event guys win that stuff, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, what think a, about it. You know, back then, guys would ride bucking horses and bulls, and you don't see that as much anymore. I mean, not as much. And all around, don't seem like. Yeah. What a. <clears throat> how good a bronc rider were you? Honestly, oh, what? I, I I did all right with. It. I filled my permit in the bronc ride. And I, the first weekend I filled it, I went to uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, and I won second in the bronc riding. And then the next day I went to to Franklinton, Tennessee, and I had to go back because I had a kid help me drive. So I slept in the park lot as at his high school while he went to school. Because I was in high school too. I missed fifty two days of it. That's a whole other story. But we went to Franklinton, and it was pouring down rain. And that van would run hot that I had. It was about eight hours over, and that van would run hot. So you couldn't run it over about 60, 70. You get up by 70 now, she's going to run hot. So when we got into town, we was running so late, I said, hey, we just got to 
we blow it up, at least we'll make it. And we just run it hot. The cop pulled us over, got a ticket. He takes it in town. Long story short, we get in there, and uh, old uh, oh, heck, uh, Harper, James Harper, uh-huh. James said, well, son, well, no, that's another guy. He said, i tell you what. He said, I'm going to run your bronc in right before your bull. He said, well, we got to buck that bronc before that bull. He said, and, and we'll get you bucked. And it was, it was in the rain. And uh, anyway, I won the bronc riding that day and third the bull riding, and I filled my permit that weekend. But, <laughs> so to answer your question, I, I, I did all right in the bronc riding, yeah, but good. I just loved it. It was good. Um, but the PBR got too big. Well, I know, but wait, I want to go back. You missed 52 days of high school. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured it out. See, in oh, school, no. the way that works is if, if you miss more than 10, they would automatically give you a, se- a 69 in a semester. So what I've done was that one semester I missed nine days, and then the other one I missed like 33 or something like that. It was a lot. <laughs> But I knew, but see, the first nine days I had like a 75, and then when you averaged the 69 in, I had the 70, and I passed. And you were good. Uh, good. See, yeah. see you, you know like a lot of people, you spent more time and energy trying to figure out yeah. how to beat the system than you would have if you'd have just done the system, right? Well, I, I, mean, was, I had to miss the days. I was rodeoing, you know. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you were probably, you know, I always think it's funny. You know, you hear the old Jim Shoulders story where the principal wouldn't let him leave and he went and made more money than the principal and walked in his <laughs> office. You're, you're, you're kind of that story where you, you well, left high school. Funny, what's funny about that is I had a teacher and, uh, and I had to lay it down to her one day and just show her on paper how I was making more money than she was. Because <laughs> she was getting on to me about missing so much school and whatnot. I said, well, I can't afford to be going to school. But see, back then... We had all these IPRA rodeos back over here, and they had it was called Longhorn rodeos, and uh, they had them all up down the East Coast. So during the winter, I could just go to them things about every weekend, and then we had all these other. And then I started getting into PRCA rodeos my senior year, trying to fill my permit. So, uh, and, uh, anyway, yeah. The, so. What was <clears throat> when you went to that? Uh, speaking of the high school finals, just curious, what was at that time, 1991? What was the North Carolina contingency? How big a group went to the high school finals? Did you, was there a lot of kids high school rodeo in North well, Carolina had, then as well? That was the best year we ever had. We was eighth in the nation, I think. Wow. And that, that was pretty good. I don't think we've ever been that good since. We had a bunch of good Cowboys back then. Yeah. A pretty decent group of kids, you know. We had, you know, there was some guys there. Jason Tucker and – like he almost made the NFR in the team roping, and we had uh, Brad Stewart who went on to win the region and went to the college finals after that. But we had a bunch of good guys, you know, Jason Bromley. Oh, I know Jason. Yeah, Jason ropes ropes picks up and ropes bulls. Yeah, I know. Jason. Yeah, well, he made the PBR finals, you know, on the bull riding. So we had some good guys, and we had some decent bronc riders, and uh, so yeah, I mean, we had a decent run at it that year. <laughs> who was who was your guy in North Carolina? Whether, you know, yes, it's the old question when you were a little kid or whatever. Who, who helped Who helped you? Who was your go-to guy when you were young wanting to ride bulls? Well, I, it was a lot of people. You know, I just didn't have one guy, but there was, there was a guy. See, the IPRA is so big out here. Right. You know, it's, mm-hmm. you just, we don't have – I went to one PRCA rodeo in North Carolina the whole time I rode it. Uh, so there was a guy named David Gaither who went to the IFR like 14 times. So I would leave a lot of times on Thursday and drive up to Virginia to David's house, and then we'd rodeo all through the weekend, and then I'd try to get back to school on Monday. And uh, so I did that a lot. There was a guy named Robbie Johnson. He a little bit older than I was. And, and the RA back in them days, though, it, it was wild. It was, it was a different group. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't your regular old – I don't know how to go about it, but it was it was a different group of guys. Let me just put it that way. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Because when I look back at PBR in the, you know, late 90s or 2000, three, four, it was a different group of guys than that is there now. So I get that. That makes yeah. complete sense. But you, so was, and I don't, maybe it still is. Did you just have it in mind? Now, why didn't you, so you're done with high school. Why didn't you just go ride bulls and enter? What made you want to go to college? 
I mean, I, with all due respect, you just said you didn't really like school. So <laughs> you, you headed off to Texas to college. What was your inspiration well, there? I didn't have a, uh, I didn't know the roads, you know, and I didn't know how to, to go to the pro rodeos a lot. I mean, I'd started going, you know, just around here, but I really didn't know. And I thought, well, this is a lead way, you know, some more to go. I, they were going to put me up for free, you know, and, and Jim Watkins, he says, we'll get them classes where you'll be able to rodeo. And it was funny because me and my daddy would go talk to them, them coaches at the high school finals, you know, and I'd already win the, the IPRA finals were in Oklahoma City, and I won them when I was a junior in high school. And so I had a bunch of colleges, you know, calling me and whatnot. And, uh, but when I'd go sit down and talk to them, they were all about the education. And my daddy was kind of like I was, you know. He, he's like my buddy. He's like, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> he ain't going to let you out of school enough. But when I talked to Jim, you know, he had, uh, he had some teachers. He said, we can get that lined up where you'll be able to rodeo. And I said, all right, this is our guy right here. What 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 college was that? What's the name of the college? Odessa Junior College. Oh, it's the Ode oh Odessa. Yeah. So that's where Jim and Ty and them guys had went, and I thought, heck yeah, this is the deal. And I didn't know how long I was going to college rodeo. I just knew I wanted to get out there and get my feet wet and get to rodeoing. And and uh, and as it worked out, you know, we we pulled it off to win it. But but I tell you what was funny, I messed my knee up. We went out there uh, right at the first of the year, and uh, I didn't ride one bull to the first half of the season. My knee was so tore up and I just wouldn't quit. And I was trying to keep – I had Adam and Gilbert Crillo. They they were uh, on our team, but they were rodeo. We, but we were good for each other because we didn't want the other ones to outdo us. So we were all trying to – it was a good rivalry. And uh, we was trying to win the rookie of the year that year also. But long story short, the half the rest half of that year, I didn't get thrown off another bull and end up winning a national title. So with the whole half front, I didn't, I didn't get one road. So it was crazy. Uh, so, so Adam and Gilbert were on your team. Anybody else we'd know on that team? No, they were the, they were the probably the best ones. I think really yeah. that, uh, nobody really I can think of stuck out from there. But what well, what did what did so you you know we all know you now. And you did good in high school, but what did? Listen, let's let's be straightforward here. Texans, I mean, nobody does it better than Texans, <laughs> according to Texans. <laughs> so what they think you here? You you're just this redneck kid from North Carolina. Did they right. did they bring you in? Did they not know what to think? How'd they treat you? Well, I I I just tried to, you know, fit in pretty much. But at the end of the day, I wanted to make a point that I was going to, you know, I was going to be there at the end. But, yeah, I mean, it took a little while. But, you know, as as they seen I, I could halfway ride, well, then they would hang out with me and let me get in the truck. <laughs> but, yeah, it worked out. We, you know. But I tell you what was kind of cool was my rookie year. So, I'd won the college finals on Sunday, and I was up at Reno on Tuesday. Sure. And – uh, I got on a bull there and got stepped on, and he broke my collarbone and broke up my ribs, and I could tell I suffocated. And I remember him running that tube in me so I could breathe, you know, so I almost died that day. And uh, so that was a pretty road to hope, but that was in 92. So I went from, you know, being at the top of my game, went into college finals on Sunday to almost dying on Tuesday. And I was 13th in the world and was making the NFR and winning the rookie of the year. And then from there, it, you know, I was out for three months. And then, but what I'm leading up to is Cody Custer says, "You ever get in a bind? And you need some way to to somebody to haul with? Call me." And uh, so when I got the end of that, you know, when I got where I could go again, I called him. And Cody Custer won the world in '92, so I got to travel with Cody to learn how to win a world title. Huh. And that was how that all laid out. That's a but, that's pretty good influence there. Cody. Yeah, it was good. And Cody, you know, I can see – and Cody's a cowboy. And like, he didn't get thrown off many bulls that year either. I mean, I could put on one hand how many I seen him get thrown off. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, he was making short rounds or going – we were splitting up every now and then. But, I mean, I literally – he didn't get thrown off much tonight, too. That guy was a machine. It was, it was pretty good watching. And especially for a young kid like me. 
Yeah. And I was right there on the bubble trying to make the finals, you know, getting hurt put me in a bind. I, I'll tell you a good story. So we, we was, I was in Memphis, and I was, I was trying to go to San Jose, California, and it was going to pay like 1200 bucks to win San Jose. I spent like 900 on the airline ticket to get there, and I got Wolfman. And Bobby Del Vecchio told me one time, he said, I got the rodeo with Bobby Lee. He said, you just enter, and there'll always be somebody going wherever you want to get to. He said, just don't worry about it, just enter. Well, I was the only idiot trying to go from San Jose, California, to uh, Bramerton, Washington the next weekend. <laughs> well, I get out to San Jose, and Wolfman throws me off. And uh, I'm pissed. I'm sitting over on my rigging bag. I said, well, I better find a ride to Bramerton, Washington. I'm by myself. So. I'm asking, there ain't nobody going to They ain't a barrel racer, they ain't a bronc rider, there ain't nobody going to Bramford to watch me. I said, that dang Bobby. Well, I look over and there was an old Copenhagen scoreboard. There was an older fellow over there and he was trying to get that scoreboard down. And he was having trouble. So I got up and I went over at that scoreboard trying to help him get, get that scoreboard down. And uh, he said, I said, where are you going from here? He said, Bramford to watch <laughs> So it worked out. I, I got in with him and rode up uh, all the way to Braver to Washington. You're probably in a in a big black truck hauling the Copenhagen scoreboard, huh? You dang right, all the way. And he smoked cigarettes, golly. <laughs> it was, it was, but man, he was a good guy. It was Sonny Dam's uh, dad. I can't remember his name. Uh, I, I know. Yes, I know. You know, yeah, you know we, I'm with. yes, yes, exactly. Good guy. We got to be buddies. Time we got to Braver. And one Braver to Washington when we got there, so it all worked out. Uh, I've been to Bremerton. I used to go to Bremerton, Washington, so I can <laughs> visualize. You got to go up. You got to cross the big Tacoma Bridge and yeah. get out. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and I had to sit there for like three days. They had a pony show. Because I'm a bull, I didn't get to go to Saturday. So I had to sit there at that little fair they had and watch that little pony show. I'd get up about noon and go watch the pony show. <laughs> big pine tree. It's in the big pine trees. There, yeah. 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 Um, how'd you, you know, College finals, that's, you know, it was in Bozeman, Montana forever. That's right. Yeah, that's where we was at. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you like Bozeman? Everybody, I've talked to, man, I've talked to Ty, I've talked to Jeff Shear, uh, uh, Sean Ramirez. There's all these friends I have that every one of them, you bring up the college finals, they say, <laughs> man, that Bozeman was fun. Man, that oh, Bozeman it, was fun. It was. We went whitewater rafting and uh, we had a good time. Yeah, we had too good of a time. <laughs> well, I tell you what was funny. We uh, at the college finals, we was uh, we uh, so I made the short round, and there was this bull that uh, when I I stayed to watch a draw well, at that bar, they had a Calcutta that night. So I waited around for the draw. The Calcutta had already started. I was hanging around there trying to get the draw. What bar was and it? I, Do you remember what bar it was? No, I don't. It could be cat's paw or the something. The cat could have been the cat's paw, yes. I think it could have been the cat's paw, yep. Look, so, yeah, so I hung around. I said, oh, yeah, I, I got this. I can, I can win this freaking thing. So, so I run to the Calcutta. Well, I get there, and, and these guys are bringing two, three, four hundred bucks. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in the PRCA now. I'm in the top 15, so I'm getting a little bit of a name for myself. Well, some lady, I don't even know this girl. She goes to bend like a thousand bucks on me. I thought, dang, I, I know I can ride this bull. I got it. I got it. So I end up giving like fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars for myself. Well, the bad thing was, I won the deal. Go to collect my money. I lost like two hundred bucks. I gave too much for myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I, I gave more than than what I could have won out of the deal after they got their percentage, but. <laughs> that was all good, but I just knew I was gonna ride that bull, so I just you, know. uh, you I don't think you'd recognize Bozeman now. It's a li Bozeman's a little different now than it was. Oh, I mean bet. it's still great, but it's uh from nineteen ninety two to now, it's probably tripled in size. So oh, yeah. but okay. uh but that old the old uh, brick breeding field house still there. They have the spring college rodeo in there still. Oh no kidding. It's a great place, yeah. Yeah. So well, oh and and by the way, I should mention, because I throw this into every conversation, just re recently, my two girls, Montana State Lady Bobcats, national champions at the College National Finals Rodeo. You know, I've seen that. Yeah. I did so. see it. Yeah. It was, you put it on online or something. I said, yeah. yeah. 
I, I don't know. I love college rodeo. After years of going to high school rodeos, I think college rodeo, is, I love watching it. Uh, the Casper, Wyoming does a great job with it. I, I love the college finals. That's one of my favorite rodeos to go to. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's um, a rodeo deal. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, how did you end up, and, and it's funny you bring up Cody because a few episodes I had Cody Custer on here. And we yeah. talked about this same this topic I'll bring up because I'm curious of everybody's kind of take of the tone and what went on. But that, that meeting where the kind of the idea of the PBR came about with 20 of you or whatever, it's the old story of the 20 guys. How'd you get invited to that? Like you were getting a name, but right. what, what was well, your connection or did you just happen to be in the right place at the right time? No, you're right. I, I had just come around, but I, I was starting to get some ranked bulls road, and uh, and Cody kind of took me under his wing at this point. You know, Custer was we're kind of to seem well. It kind of started in the summer, but and I'd got to be buddies with Tough and them guys, and uh, you know, so we was rodeoing a lot. But I was the youngest guy there that day, mm -hmm. so you know, if them guys would have told me we're going to Rob Banks, I would have been. Yeah, Lil, well, let's do it. You know, these are my heroes. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to remember, yeah. I'm a guy from North Carolina that only seen these guys on TV mm -hmm. until the last six months. And now I'm hanging out with them every day, rodeoing. And so just for me to be around them and me getting to be a part of it, you know, I'm I'm loving it. Well, I didn't have a thousand bucks. And I had – Sam Applebaum was the, the guy who was heading all this up. We was – he was like our brain behind this. And if you ever met Sam, I mean, you, you realize you can't believe PBR got where it's at today. He was a good businessman, but Sam cussed every – he GD'd everything that he's – every other word, you yeah. know, or dropped the F-bomb. And, I mean, he's he's our main guy. <laughs> and uh, so I had 500 bucks, and I gave Sam my 500. I said, look, I got some good bulls drawing in California next week, and I'm going to try to bring you that other 500. He said, all right. So it worked out. I went to California and I got some money and I won it. And I went back and paid him at 500. So I got my thousand dollars. I was, I was in. What, but, what was your feel sitting in that meeting? Was it an all day meeting? Was it, I mean, I'm asking you things I've never got to ask people, but was it all day? Was it, I, here's what I think. I, I don't think you guys sat in there and said, Man, someday we'll pay the the winner a million dollar bonus. We'll be on CBS. Well, I mean, really, it was kind of saying, "Well, we're, we're bull riders. We could do this a little better." There I'm wasn't sure these I, huge expectations, was there? No, not really. I mean, that I think that the bull riders only had kind of started taking taking off a little bit, and we had. Uh, I say we. Them guys had the vision more than I did. I was so young and just coming around, but. They were guys like, you know, Tenders and Tuff and Ty and Cody Lambert and them guys. They they had a vision. You know what I mean? Now you gotta remember they're 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 in their kind of going off the prime of their years mm -hmm. and I'm just coming in, you know, right. but they're starting to you know, we were busting our butt rodeoing every day and them guys was getting wore down. You know, they'd been going hard for quite a few years at this point and uh they were looking for a a deal where we could go rodeo on the weekend and make ten, fifteen thousand, you know, in a weekend at that time we would have been a great deal. And then uh be home with our families. And that's where I seen it. You know, I seen it where they were trying to set up a tour like that, you know. And um and you know, it, it worked when the day I remember that day there were guys that were against it. If I remember right, uh and I may be speaking I think it was Marty Standard. He he was he, he was so good with what the BRO had going on that he didn't want us to mess up what was happening with them guys. Understandable, yeah. But then there was tough – then, like, tough and them guys were saying, yeah, but we, we can do our own deal. And uh, so, you know, it was just back and forth, back and forth. And, well, then, then there was like a rival between the PBR and the, and the BRO, you know, who had the best guys there for a while. So – that was a that was another deal, but yeah, to to be there at that meeting that day, it was pretty cool. It was, what, uh, yeah. But it was like you said, it wasn't like, hey, we're gonna pay a million dollars. They just had an idea and didn't know where it was gonna go. Really. Yeah. 
was was Cody Lambert even in 1992? Was Cody Lambert always Cody Lambert? Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, it's Cody. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, back in them days, you just seen him with Ty in that band all the time, you know, and uh, which we'd jump in and rodeo with him some. But, you know, he was always had Ty, you know, under his wing, running up down the road. Well, he used to – he always told the story of they pulled into the back gate at Cheyenne one time, and they'd say, do you know who we are? We have whatever Ty had at the time. We have six world titles between the two of us. And – it was Ty. <laughs> Ty had all the world titles, but he right. liked to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I will say, and he's probably told you this, Cody Lambert, one time he and I were talking, and he said through, my, through his career with the PBR and when, when the PBR sold that first time, he said, the best phone call I ever made was to Jerome Davis. Oh yeah, and he did. I was a, uh, I was putting on a bull riding school, you know, back then. Now you gotta remember, I, um, man, I, I went from making pretty decent money, to, you know, it just quit. Yeah. And uh, so I was putting on a bull riding school, trying to stir up some money and get things going. And uh, Cody said, "Hey, I got some good news." I said, "What is it?" He said, "Well, you're a millionaire." I said, "What?" He said, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to sell that business, he said, and you're going to make a lot of money. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't take that to heart. Or, you know, you just don't, when you hear something like that, you don't right. go, oh, let's go spend a lot of money. But as it worked out, you know, a few months later, it all come ahead and uh, it worked out. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I think people probably forget that, that everything that can be done we did a lot of things for you and there's fundraisers here and there but as far as steady i mean it was tough for a while oh, i mean oh it was really tough yeah i mean they were sending me letters i mean they were doing these fundraisers we was paying the doctor bills off and i'd actually got a lawyer to try to go in and you know knock them back you know you don't have to pay all of it and uh but yeah it got they were they were coming by the house. I even had a uh, there was a cop come by and served some papers, you know. And I, he said, I don't mean to have to do this, you know, whatever. But yeah, they, they was gonna start taking stuff. So, uh, but yeah, it was getting tight. And and I knew, like I mentioned something to JW. I said I may have to end up selling some of them shares, but he said don't do it because JW I think was on the board or he was oh. he knew. He said no, and he wouldn't ever tell me. I never knew till Cody called me. Okay, so uh, so that's a good point. When you're in a tough spot, because there were guys that sold their, like the Carrillo boys right sold in. their shares because they needed some money to start a business or something. Yeah. So you yeah. could have bailed on so those did. shares. Right. Uh, and seeing I was, you know, I was leaning on me pretty hard to get rid of it. And, but I knew, I mean, you could see the PBR was gaining ground, you know, and it looked like it was, it was pretty solid at that point. And I just, I wasn't going to sell. I just, I was going to hold out to the very end. And, uh, but it was when, uh, when Cody called me, you know, I said, all right, we might filter out this sucker yet. We might make it work. So yeah. yeah. It, it, now you got it. Now you got a nice log staircase in the background. Can't beat that. Wood yeah, floor. That's all I got. Just that. That's, it. that's yeah. just your set. It's a fist. <laughs> Um, <laughs> speaking of, you know, the times and the best phone call Lambert ever made, I, I've always told people, I think I took it for, I took it for granted for a long time. And in the last three, four years, I've noticed I've kind of reflected cause I'm, you know, I'm on the downhill side of my career in the arena for sure. And people start asking me and bringing things up about guys getting hurt. And I, I have realized that I think I kind of compartmentalized it for a lot of years. But I think the hardest thing about my job is seeing my friends hurting or get hurt. You know, that's a, I, I, think, I think it's kind of sad that we do get used to it. I mean, I'm not sure that's a thing we should get used to. But, right. um, you know, I was, I was in Fort Worth in 1998. Uh, you probably don't remember that. But I was at the real start of my career in the PBR. And Tuff yeah. hired me to go to Fort Worth. And, he was uh, there that night, then. 
Yeah, I was there. But you were rolling in the PBR at that time. You had not bucked off many bulls. You were the number one guy, weren't you? And that was yeah. March. Yeah, so and it you was, had a good I, win. I did buck off three bulls, you know. And, uh, but we had, you know, but I, that was coming back to, you got to remember back Ty and, <clears throat> and Jim Sharp and them guys, they were having years where they wouldn't buck off 10 bulls in a year. You know, yeah. and you, you got to remember Jim Sharp actually rode 27 in a row at the finals. Yeah. If you go back and look at before and after, you know, yeah, the, the, the 10 fits in the middle. Yeah, That's I remember. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, so yeah, I was having one of them years, and that was my goal was to, to be them guys. Well, I I felt like my average, is, and one of them bulls that threw me off that year, they opened the gate at Houston, and uh, I didn't call for him. But, you know, but it, it was what it was. But the PBR was getting so big that I wanted to win that title. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. And, and I tell you what was crazy that night in Fort Worth. We had a buddy of mine named Lenny Ellis. He was a he was a, a businessman in Virginia, and we'd actually he had a, a jet. We would he would call me up. He said, "Hey, you going to Fort Worth?" I'd say, "Yeah." So let's let's jump in the plane. We'll fly down to New Orleans, and I'll have you at the rodeo the next day. I said, "All right, let's do it." So that day we was trying to fly into Fort Worth, and we had a we couldn't get that plane in there. It socked over, whatever they call it, and got bad. We had land in Waco, get there barely in time. The guy's not even let me in the arena. And I told him, I said, I promise I am entered in this bull ride, but he wasn't <laughs> going to let me in. And uh, finally, we, we talked him into it. And then I just did show up to be there for the opening. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was funny that, you know, how when you look back at it, how everything was like, wasn't letting me get there that day. But it, um, it worked out. And draw a bull name. And, and I've... I've used this and I don't know, I don't remember bulls like a lot of guys do. You know, I, yeah. I uh, the good ones, I know my favorite bulls of all time. I'm, I'm getting now where I'll pay attention a little more, but for some reason, for 20 whatever years, I've remembered that the name of your bull was Knock 'em Out John. Yeah, it was. It, and I, I'd had that bull before uh, in Vegas and he had hit me in the face before like that. And I knew that when I got on him, and I said, "Well, I'll emphasize really just staying over him so he don't get me back, you know, and bringing me." Right. And uh, and it worked. I was riding him pretty good, and then he jumped forward, and then he got me to hit him on. That's right when he knocked me out. Yeah. And then I uh, just hit the ground, you know, like a swim bull broke my neck. Which yeah, it was the ground. It was the ground that. It was the ground, yeah. not the yeah. Right. It wasn't a hit. Yeah, it was when I was knocked out, and I went over his head, and that's when I broke my neck. Um. I always think with you, because now I've seen other people with, with similar injuries, uh, kind of close to family dealing with this. I guess I always, now that I know you, maybe not as much, but I always thought that could have gone two ways. Like you were so passionate about bull riding. When an accident like that happens, I think the two ways it could have gone is say, I never want to be around bull riding again. That's a sour yeah. point. That's a that's a bitter part of my life. It's hurtful. Or that's all I know. That's what I love. I'm going to immerse myself in it. Uh, you stayed with what you love there, but it had to be yeah. painful at times to be around it. Well, you know, not I, be in it. No, that that is a lot true. You know, I always want to get. You know, I, I want to have my hands deep into it. You know, when we have events or whatever, but. You know, but it, it's I, – I get to do – so the shape I'm in, I get to do a lot. And I got a lot of good people around me. You know, that's a lot of them. Yeah. You know, I, everybody says, oh, man, you go, yeah, I got a lot of good people. You know what I mean? That's around me to support me in what I do. And, uh, yeah, so it works out. But, yeah, it, I get to keep raising bulls and do what I love, so it works out. It You can go anywhere, though. I always find it, it – it, it makes it warms my heart when I see you at a PBR somewhere, and all of a sudden you're on the back of the chutes, or all of a sudden you're over here. You can go anywhere and just sit there, and pretty soon you got four guys lifting you up somewhere. Oh yeah, it's a pretty good little family you got here, isn't it? No, it is. I mean, them guys. I mean, it's like they never, they never forgot me. You know, it's what it's like. Hey, you got a spot? That's why well, I'll probably go over here or there, or whatever. Well, there's a spot way up on top of that chute. I bet we can get you up there. And I mean, they'll, 
they'll <laughs> you know I'll piggyback while they climb stairs or whatever you know but they'll get me where we need to go a lot of times but yeah, yeah. man them guys are awesome um they really are there but there is ways you know I, I know people that have gone through injuries like you and it would be pretty easy to get bitter about life I would think well it, yeah yeah really easy but I mean I think really looking back I always said that the same mindset that wins a world title is that same mindset will get you through every day you know right and my good Lord Jesus Christ I feel like that 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 together uh, makes things happen and that's me I think you just gotta because we all get fed negative energy from all around us you know and it's it's how you take that in I feel like and and uh you know, a big negative is me being in this wheelchair. You know what I mean? You just got to have that mindset that takes you through it and go on. Because uh, you get up every day, you can either have a good day or a bad day, and you got to remember that. That's how, at <laughs> the end of the day, you're the one that's going to control that. So, um, There's a lady that lives at your house that she can make your day a little better. She always oh, makes my day. <laughs> Tiffany makes my days better. Oh, yeah, no doubt. She. If I did anything good after this deal of getting married to my wife, there ain't no doubt I got a good one. She's, yeah. a, she's a good lady, and she's hung with me all this time. And, and you know, when I got hurt, we was actually supposed to got married in uh, in May, two months after I had got I got hurt. And uh, so we had to postpone that, and we did it in October. And I, I tried to run her off because I felt like I didn't want her to go down that road. You know, I loved her, of course, but I didn't want – I feel like she didn't need to be five years from now hanging out with the crippled guy. You know what I mean? But she, uh, she never filtered. She just hung right in there. And, yeah. and, uh, and I always try not to be that guy, you know, the guy that's, that when that's pulling everybody down, you know what I mean? I don't want to be that energy uh, around people. So I always try to, you know, and, and most people, when they come around you and you're in this wheelchair, they're just like, Oh, you know, but, they're trying to pull you down. You know what I mean? But yeah. you got to keep everybody rolling. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to yeah. roll with life. And uh, heck, it, it's all good. I think I think those of us, this group you talk about that helps you, and I think those of us that are around you a lot, I I don't think about it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just see you. you just right. go, just go cool. bullshit with Jerome. You know, <laughs> I just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it's um, I talked to Tiffany one day in an airport um, and had a family member kind of going through a similar thing and was asking for a phone number to, if somebody wanted to call her and was talking about this and, and uh, she's the best anyway, but um, she had told me and I kind of paraphrased here, but she said, you know, uh, people, she, uh, she told me, people tell me what a, a great woman I am for being there with Jerome. She said, they're wrong. She said, I am nothing compared to the great man he is. <laughs> and, you know, like she said, there's never a, why did this happen to me? There's never a poor me. There's never a what. She said, you've stayed, just like you said, you choose to have a good day every day. And that, it almost made me tear up. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. but, but that's, that responsibility is yours in a way oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, you just got to stay motivated. You know, that's me. I, I try to, as long as I can stay, you know, I, and I'm kind of like you are. I mean, you always got little little goals that you're always trying to set or new new ideas or new revenues that you want to go down. And that's me. I mean, I'm, every day I'm trying to get something else started, you know. And uh, it's it, it's good. But I've got a good wife. I mean, she, she'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's that what was the story of the big there was a my favorite story of hers is you were arguing about who the bigger redneck was <laughs> like you were going to see her family yeah. or something and you're driving down a road <laughs> yeah it was true so so like when we do so, we're rednecks i mean there ain't no doubt about it but but we'll always like she always tells me that there's more rednecks living in this town where i grew up here in archdale they are from where she is in Bennett. Well, I said, well, there ain't no way. Well, we were going to go work some cows, and actually, Frankie Smith, Pumpkin Town. Oh, yeah. 
the clown, he's with us. We're going to go work cows one day. And he tell, he'll he even tell us at rodeo sometime. But we're, we're driving, and they're having a, a Farmer's Day festival in town in Bennett. And probably a mile and a half away, I could see a, a horse going down the road. They're, they're just old girls on the back of this horse. And she, she's all about to fall off. She's hanging on the back of that camel, that, of that saddle, and, and you can just see it from way off. And I said, oh, yeah. I told Tiffany, I said, I don't want to hear no more. Because on the back of that, I had a big old rebel flag. And it was draped over the back of the butt of this horse. And I said, you can call me redneck all you want. I said, you look right up here. And we're getting closer to this horse, this girl and her boyfriend's riding it. You know, she's hanging on the back. She's barely hanging. And he's barely hanging on. The old horse ain't been fed. He looks <laughs> You know, it's, it's, I said, look you right here. And I got to looking, and the closer we got to that horse and that flag and, and that boyfriend, that girl had a Jerome Davis T-shirt on. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> you lose. You... Yeah, that's like, oh, it was like uh... automatic loss. That's like my people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. Uh... But it was, hey, I just waved at him when we went by. I could just, it was awesome. Possibly my favorite story of all time. I think she told me that story. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Yeah. If I hadn't rubbed it in so bad, you know, <laughs> but it was just as we got there where I could read her T-shirt. Because what happened is when I got hurt, they had these T-shirts that helped draw and buck the odds. And that was the T-shirt. She had that T-shirt on the back, and there it was. I said, oh, God. <laughs> anyway. But, hey. Oh, God. Was, hey, this, wasn't, wasn't your wife – this just flashed in my head. Wasn't she a track star? Am I wrong? Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, she did. She, uh, well, she had won. I don't know if she won the state. I know she won our like division and all that. She went the state. I don't, I don't think she ever won the state, but she was right there close. She was a sprinter, right? Like, yeah, rent like 100, 200, 100, that kind of. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she said uh, she had a big old booty. That's what she, <laughs> she got a sprinter booty. Is that that's what she did? <laughs> Maybe maybe she and I should race someday. I'll well, have to. A bad need, but that would be good. That'd be awesome. <laughs> well, my legs ain't I'm exactly great. Try, I'm always trying to get her to race them. I got a bad knee. Let's, 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 let's. I got. Well, my legs ain't great, so that'd be good. There you go. Um, tell us, because uh, I know a lot of people who watch this. What about Davis Rodeo Ranch? What are you raising? Tell well, me about your uh, ranch. Yeah, so we got a – so what we got – so me and Tiff, we got together like in 93. We got married in 98. But in about 93, we actually had a herd of cows together. Her daddy used to put on rodeos. And we uh, – me and my dad put on bull rides here at the house. And uh, so we just got us a herd together. And she actually gave me 12 head of rodeo heifers one year. And uh, I told her all she she was doing to give me a feed bill, but we we ended up raising. We, that's where our herd started, and so now we uh, boot barn got involved with us, and we're doing Wild West Wednesdays, and we have a rodeo here the first and third Wednesday of every month here at the house. So it that's really turned out to be really good. And then we got uh, you know our PBR is 22 years this year. So we got it coming up, and uh, it'll be Labor Day weekend, and then we're hauling almost every weekend. You know, we was in trial this weekend at PBR, so with our bulls, but do a lot of faturity deals, you know, bull competitions. I got partners with that. I got, uh, you know, that's kind of our deal. We've got, I got quite a few partners, and and uh, hauling these faturity calves around, and training faturity calves, and and having events, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still doing something that I really love, and. Uh, I'm able to keep going. So, what do out. your <clears throat> what do your do your bulls have something they go back to? I, I know a lot of guys, you know, have certain bulls that they believe in or had. What what are your what's your deal? Well, that's a good question. We had, uh, you know, when me and Tom Tig was together, I had nightlife and a lot of them bulls. So we've got a lot of that genetics. But the one I think that really changed our breeding deal was Super Freak. He win. Uh, he won the American Heritage that year as a two-year-old, win like 92,000 that year. And we started breeding. And 
we were, we took 11 bulls this weekend, and I think we was looking at on the trailer, nine of them bulls were either sons or grandsons of, of Super Free. Super Free. We was talking about that, but but now I'm big on Showtime, you know, the Daddy, the Bruiser, and some of them. And I've got a lot of Showtime genetics started up in there now. Back to that, it's working really good. And uh, I've got a, another bull, Legrande, that's been really good, and his calves have been outstanding lately. So, you know, we're just trying to improve every year. Is it, it, it you know, a lot of horse people, and I've I've been probably in the last 20 years closer to looking at the horse breeding program are bull guys like horse guys where in the horse deal you can trace it stronger back to the mare it oh yeah i've heard guys say the cow is the deal right yeah because i mean you get there's a lot of good bulls out there but it's got that cow that's going to make that that leap you know it makes that difference between you know having an ordinary decent bull to having a superstar you know you've got to have that cow yeah for sure i know you get a lot of a lot of uh, you know guests at your ranch a lot of tours i know the pbr is taking people tour tours out to your place and i do a lot of tours at the pbr events the elite seat deal with the q and a things i know yeah. what i get i can pretty much predict what people are going to ask for the most part what's the That's most what, what's the most common question about bulls that somebody who doesn't know anything what what do they ask you the most that maybe they don't understand or a misnomer about bulls? You know, I think that they don't understand. They say, well, how do you get them bulls to buck like that? You know what I mean? And, and what people don't realize is it's a genetic makeup of hundreds of years of breeding that is the reason that bull does what he does. And, and I always compare it. Like we raise these border collie, these border collie pups. And when they're six or eight weeks old, we'll put them on, we'll put them on little goats, and they'll go right to work. Oh, that's yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and it's bred into them pups to do that. And you can do the same thing when we wean our calves. They're just bred to be like them pups to do what they're bred to do. And you know, years ago we would, you know, when we'd have a young boy, you'd put these kids on them. But you can't do that no more. These calves are bred so good. You're wiping the kids out. You know, you can't take a – you better go over here to do your dairy farmer, buddy, and, and get some Holstein calves and let them kids get on. Because right. if not, them calves are going to kill them off. These calves are bred way too good these days. Yeah. You know. Well, and that's – that. The, Cody Custer, that's – Cody Custer's big in that putting, putting young kids on bulls that fit them so they can, so they can learn. Sure. That's what he's well, – I mean, that's his main thing he's doing right now. Yeah, and, and see, I and, and, and I had a little spurt there where I had these calves and we had these kids, and we always just got on the bucking calves. You know, it's just what you did when you was growing up. But, you know, reality hit that these calves are a lot more than they used to be. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a little different deal now. You better go get uh, some calves that, that they can warm up. Um, I'm going to use the border call. I like that example because people understand dogs like I, I always use the you know we all we all know you can't just pull a, a horse out of a pasture and do something to it to make it win the Kentucky Derby I mean everybody knows that but with bulls they doubt kind of that process I like the border call yeah the border collies know when they're this big but they, should oh, they go the right same. they go to work and it made me think of that when I was working in pups that day yeah, you know, they, you know, they're just like these calves. We we have when we wean them off, we will put them dummies on them, and it's in them. Yeah, that's you know, I like that. And I'm I'm stealing that. I'm not going to pay you to use hey, that analogy, good. but uh, you know, I'll give you. I will give you. Give me a little credit. Credit. Hey, my friend Jerome <laughs> Davis uses yeah. this one. That's I'm I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. JeromeDavis.com. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You seeing you seeing some young guys you like? Uh, the, um, yeah, the PBR. To speaking of the kind of bulls you're breeding, it's been tough on guys. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it's there's guys. Man, you get dick slammed week after week. Yeah. It's tough on them. 
Um, but there's some good young, I'm, I'm noticing all of a sudden now the Brazilian pipeline, they, they just kind of keep coming, but there's some young American guys that look pretty good right now. Yeah, there he is. You know, was, I was there this weekend at Tower on and, uh, you know, Dalton Castle, you mm -hmm. know, guys like that, you know, there's some young kids that, that look good. And I feel like we're getting through that spurt. You know, we had a spurt there for a little bit. It seemed like to me where, it was just dead. We weren't getting no young guys coming in, you know, yeah, not, not a lot, maybe one or two. But here lately, and I don't know if it ain't where we've had them, these kids are getting old enough. We didn't, we, we figured out we're going to quit killing them off on them young calves, let them learn a little bit. Yeah. And it seemed like we're at that point maybe now where these guys are starting to come, come from there. You know, I agree. A little more of it. I agree. I, I'm with you. I think Dal Dalton Castle. Now, yeah. here we're saying this publicly. He impresses me in every way, not just yeah. how he rides, but the kind of kid he is too. Oh, and that's, yeah. a bit, that's a big deal. In my world, I tell guys, I've told my own girls, you can have all the success you want, but what people will remember is how you treat them outside of the arena. That's exactly right. You know, and, and, uh, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize in this rodeo deal is, you know, there's more – there's almost more money in sponsors than they are what they're going to go and win. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's how you carry yourself and how you, you know, I, and I'm, and I'm proud to say this and I'm, I, I got with Wrangler in 1992 and I was up there at their office here the other day and, and me and uh, one of the girls up there was talking, she said, you may be, and I may be wrong. There may be one on, she said, but I think you and George Strait are the two longest endorsees we've got. <laughs> As well, that guy. Who's he? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're way better looking than George yeah. Strait. <laughs> who's, George, who's that guy? But you know, but they about could have built this house. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if, if them them guys will pay attention and and uh, take care of their sponsors and stuff, um, but it goes back to Don Castle being the good guys. What I'm leading up to, you know, that's what them guys want. You know, is is that type of thing? And it was just like. Well, Kai Hamilton's with me right now. And yeah. uh, so we was talking about it yesterday, and he said, yeah, Wrangler come to me and want to do an endorsement deal. He's a good guy. I mean, if you've ever been around Kai, he's yeah, always completely. happy, smiling, and a good kid. You know, it's stuff like that that at the end of the day, it pays dividends. Yeah. You know, um, when you won, it was a big deal. I remember in 1995, you were the first world champion east of the Mississippi. <laughs> That was a big deal. I remember going, what's this guy from North Carolina? You know, I was, I was in, I was in rodeo, but not, I wasn't quite, that was a band. I, I got my PRCA card in 94. So I was just going, but Jerome Davis, Jerome Davis, man, east of the Mississippi. <laughs> now, when I go to North Carolina, I mean, there's NASCAR, of course. That's right. North Carolina great crowds kind of a hotbed of bull riding there you there's great fans out there and a great group of bull riders out there as well yeah they, they are but i mean we had some guy jb something mooney maybe yeah, yeah. J, J, james burton mooney yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's won a little bit you know yeah but we have we've had a good you know brian canner was hot back then mm -hmm. uh you know there's some hot guys come we got a young there's some young kids now that that's looking really good. We our little deal is a sixteen year old uh, Clay Guy. Like he win the national world title out in Abilene, I guess, with junior bull riders. And uh and he went my Wild West Wednesday the other day, even though <laughs> Ezekiel Mitchell, Ezekiel's been coming over, you know, getting on. Yeah, yeah. Ezekiel got thrown off and old Clay beat him, but it's kind of fun. But, yeah, it's all good. But yeah, we got a it seemed like though we had a we had a little time when it kind of slowed up, but now it's picking back up again. Like we're starting to see them kids yeah. come around and ride. Um, when people bring up North Carolina to me and bull riders, whether it's JB Mooney, Brian Canner, I always like Josh Faircloth. I like oh, Josh. Yeah. And Josh I, a good dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, Josh is always around and, you know, the bucket calves, he's hanging out. And yeah. But I always yeah. say, well, that's Jerome Davis did that. That's Jerome <laughs> Davis did that. But well, you know, you got to know in your mind – that starting in that mid to late 90s, you, and still to this day, I mean, you, 
you get you have a facility for people to come for young guys to come and not only learn to ride but learn to be a good person just like what you were talking about you got to know in your heart that that makes you feel good to know that you've played such a huge role in developing young bull riders in North Carolina you got to know that right well it 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 makes you feel good but you know what it's I just got a passion for it you know if you if you I'll show you somebody successful if if they got a passion you know, I mean, that's the people that are that, that go to that next level, you know. But but I just got a passion for rodeo, you know, being a cowboy and that type of thing. So all that other just comes with it. You know, these guys that, uh, you know, leave here, you know, Josh. Josh and Brian a good example. JB, them guys was around, you know, a lot when I, they were younger. And, uh, you know, it's just what we did around here. And, it, and, you know, at the end of the day, they went on and, and took it, went, went with it. <clears throat> I had JB on this show. He actually, he was in this studio. He came and sat. We, yeah. we got him to come here. He was in Billings. It was way last fall. And you know how we got him to come here? We said, uh, while we do this, you can drink beer. <laughs> yeah, like that. Like he was here. <laughs> he was here. Um, but I always ask, and I'm going to ask you, I always ask bull riders, not, and probably not every one of them, who the greatest bull rider in person that they ever saw, who was the best bull rider they ever saw. And you know what J.B. Mooney's answer was? Brian Cantor. Brian Cantor. You're right. <laughs> he said Brian Cantor at a time was the greatest bull rider he ever saw. That is, so you knew that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Brian, he was awesome. Brian got stepped on in uh, – it was out in California, and I don't know. It just seemed like after he got stepped on in the head out there, and uh, it, I don't know if he ever bounced back after that. Yeah. Uh, and he had his knee messed up. He wrecked a motorcycle down here playing, tore his knee up, and then it was his hip. Yeah. His hip got infected. The hip you know, he just had the hip was a bad deal. He just had bad luck keeping him all at one time. It seemed like. And uh, hard to bounce back. Do you think? Do you think in in the bulls they're riding now in the PBR when when Jess Lockwood was a junior in high school, high school rodeoing in Montana, a lot of parents said that J, that Jess Lockwood's going to be the next PBR world champ. I said, I'll tell you what he needs to do. He needs to grow about five inches and gain about twenty five pounds, or he'll get busted in half. Lo and behold, Jess Lockwood grew about five inches and gained about twenty five pounds. <laughs> But, you know, I always said, Brian Cantor, he was tiny. And I don't yeah. know that that helped it. That, that's t- the bulls that are riding now, that's tough. It is. I mean, them little guys, I mean, they, they can, when they ride, they ride. But it's, it's like Lane used to say, you know, you, you got to be able to bounce back from it. And uh, they don't get me wrong. Now, now, Brian was tough, don't get me wrong. But his body just wouldn't hold up a lot of times, you know. And that's what got him was his body at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, his hips and his knees and, and everything else he had going yeah. on. Um, okay, best bull rider you ever saw. <laughs> Excluding yourself on video. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm a JB fan, but the years of uh, of Jim Sharp, you know, I think he threw it off. He told me it was like six or eight bulls in one year. Yeah. You know, and you can say – Ah, oh, the bulls wasn't his rank, and the bulls were harder to ride. A lot of them, they were out of line, you know, just big yeah. old brindles. And today, if they don't kick over their head and spin, they're on Cody's ass about getting rid of them. Yeah. You know, they want they want them bulls that are, you know, if we had bulls like that to get on every day, man. But you know, the two guys that stick out in my mind were Tough and Jim. I, I think in the late the late nineties or Early nineties, early nineties. Early nineties. Early nineties. Yeah. 90s, yeah. Yep. Late eighties, early nineties. There was a group of guys right then that it wasn't all right to get thrown off. I don't care if what you got on, it wasn't all right. You know, right. It, and if you go in that locker room, I was sitting in the locker room and I'm I'm listening to these guys and they're coming in, they've been getting on and coming back in the locker room and. Oh, he's a piece of shit, and he wasn't no good, and they're making excuses for each other, you know. And I thought we didn't do that, you know. You didn't. There wasn't ever. It wasn't all right, 
you know, and if you looked off, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's just one of them deals that today I feel like them guys are too easy on each other. You know, they don't make them accountable. Yeah. They yeah. Get off. But that, yeah, that, those were the glory that those years of, uh, well, I'll, tell, I'll say this at the NFR, people did not exit the Thomas Mack Arena to be sure and catch their shuttle back to their hotel. Everybody stayed for the yeah. bull ride, man. No, it's true, huh? Yeah. 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 But them guys, I mean, Clint Ranger, you know, that, that guy was one of my heroes. He never won a world title, but he was a machine. You know, he was yeah. right in there with them guys back in the days. Yeah. I mean, that group, that band, when they pulled up, you know, back then it was, it was, uh, well, Lane was in there, you know, till he got killed, of course. But, you know, it was just that Clint and Norman Curry was in on that group there for a while, you know, rides all 10, 10 and 4. <clears throat> and that, you know, it was, yeah. it was like that group was pretty awesome. They, it was the deal where, you know, I like uh, somebody said it, Cody Webster told it to me, but I tell my girls that you should get to the point where, people are pissed when you pull up to the rodeo and that's yeah. that van of guys. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. damn it. Now what do we do? That's yeah. And, and they rode, you know what I mean? They were just, they just got in there and got it. They, you know, they were just cowboys. They were the ultimate machine. I feel like back in the days, Norman they Bulls was flipping over in the box, you know, oh, yeah. they didn't do that. They didn't whine. They got in there. And, uh -huh. How many times you seen Ty Murray take one leg down? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, yeah, Cowboy. Norman yeah. Curry. I'm glad you brought up Norman Curry. Everybody talks about Jim Sharp riding ten at the NFR. Norman Curry and didn't Adriano rode ten, didn't he? Adriano rode Those are the three. Yeah, Jerome yeah. uh, Davis uh, rode ten, but he slapped one. <laughs> <laughs> did you really? Did you? Yeah. Did yeah. you slap him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, no, I mean they Blade said made. you slapped. Blade Bay to Dan Russell. Yeah, he pulled me down, but then he got me. I just slapped him and I set up and rode him, but. Was that 95? 95, yeah. That was the year you went. What round was that that you slapped one? Uh, round eight. Uh, yeah, round eight. Now, I tell you, uh, I told my Clint Ranger. So, you know, Clint was so close to win the world title. Yes, the yes. Time. Uh, and Clint come back there because I was pissed. You know, you, you, I'm, <laughs> I'm rolling. You know, I'm about to try to win a world title. I got Terry Don on my butt. I don't need to be getting – I don't need to slap one right now. And I was about to put my I, I – I don't think I was going to put myself in a slump, but I was so bad that I was – it was getting negative. And he, he come back there and said, hey, you don't go down that road. You know what I mean? You've had too good of a week. you got two more. It's time to step it up. It's, you know, get, get out of that shit. Let's go. Huh. You know, because you can and you, you'll want something – and that's why Clint didn't win a world title. I think he wanted it so bad. Yeah. yeah. And he put so much pressure on himself that, you know, he just – he would overdo it. He Clint Clint is on that, if you bring up that list of great bull riders that never won a world title. Clint Bronger's won that first. He comes up right away with a lot of people. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, that's the guy I think of, him and Denny Flynn. Yeah. Uh, there's another Montanan that comes up once in a while, Scott Brady. Scott Breading was a great bull rider. Sure. Too. Yeah. No doubt. So yeah, they're not far. Guys. They're somewhere within an hour of where we are, where I am oh, right no. now. Those yeah. two are somewhere. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So Scott, um, he's a good dude. Yeah. Well, listen, Jerome, uh, I, I could tell stories all day with you, especially if there's more about a redneck with a Jerome Davis t shirt <laughs> on. But, uh, uh, I think I'll see you somewhere soon this fall or somewhere. I like sure. to see you guys. I see Tiff more than I see you probably, yeah. but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> listen, I, uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the stories. Um, you know, like I say, it, you're, you're just Jerome, but every once in a while I step back and I go, man, that guy, that guy does a lot for a lot of people and it does not go unnoticed. And I appreciate what you do in the bull business for the young guys and for guys like me. You've always been, since, since 1998, you've been treated me like nothing but gold. And like I said, that's what we remember. And that's what I always remember about you. So Same here. I mean, shoot. Always been a fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, someday, someday, I'm going to get out to the Jerome Davis Invitational at your ranch and wow the crowd. Yeah. 
So we're going to do it. All right. Thank you. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Jerome. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Have a good time. Thank you. 